G'day, it's Sunday the 25th of February 2017 I'm here in my workshop um, to talk to you about my epic salad. Um, I think somebody dubbed them, I didn't call it my epic salad, but the idea is to feed the microbiome in my colon, all those bacteria and other creatures that live in your colon and now have been discovered to have a huge impact on your health. Um, I've been on this kick for about three years now um, and it's become, you can't open a newspaper these days without finding reference to the microbiome. Um, um, so I thought I'd just I'll show you how I make the salad and give you my justification for the different ingredients uh, and just to document that. Um, so the first thing I put into my salad's leaves and I pick the leaves out of my garden so I've got a variety of different kinds. I mean obviously I don't pick um, I pick vegetable or herb leaves. So I've got uh, silver beet, um, basil, sage, thyme, tarragon, a whole variety of uh, spinach and when I've got lettuce I pick that. So I pick a whole variety of them, wash them off and chop them up and put them into my salad. And the reason for eating the leaves is that there's a lot of soluble fiber in leaves which is good for your gut polyphenolics which just means complex chemicals which plants use for either defense or whatever that's why I say if you if you pick a leaf that's got lots of holes in it just wash it because those leaves have been attacked by caterpillars and they will have secreted a whole host of other compounds to protect themselves from caterpillars which might benefit your gut and then there's a the sugar in leaves called a sulfoquinovol SQ it's a sugar that's not present in many uh, many other foods and it's very important for bacteria, apparently bacteria love this component of leaves, uh, probably evolved from a very long time ago. The next thing I try and get into my salads, antioxidants, and among them are the anthocyanins. Um, those are the things that make um, purple cabbages and beetroots and things like that. So anything brightly colored, you know, a capsicum, tomato, purple carrots, beetroot, uh, as I said, purple cabbage, anything like that, I try and, blueberries, I try and get that in, that, those into my, my salad. And then there's some bacterial nutrients that I like to include. Um, acetic acid, which is vinegar. Butyric acid, which is hard to find. You, apparently, it's, you can find it in traditionally made feta cheese, so the, the real Greek cheese, so I try and buy that for my salad. And then lactic acid, which is in fermented vegetables like sauerkraut and kimchi, you know, the, uh, the Korean fermented vegetables. So these basically are the things that I can find scientific evidence to support. There's one other thing, and that is um, I read a study where they, they compared oat, oats um, and brown rice to quinoa, chia, all these so-called superfoods. And the conclusion was that the, the superfoods had no advantage over the, the easily available um, uh, brown rice and oat, oats or oat bran. So I put a bit of oat bran as well as the feta cheese and so on. And then, I, as you'll see, I'll, show, I'll take you through and making my salad now. So let's go and do it. Okay, so uh, this, is, this is sweet basil. I've got thyme, um, there's a rather scraggly mint which I'll use, and then swinging around, um, there's uh, all kinds of uh, silver beet, and this is a, a, this one of the tiny leaves that's basil, uh, perennial basil. I've got spinach over there, so I just watered it, and then over here, I've got sage leaves, so I'll pick some of those. Um, and back here, I don't know, see it here. Back here, this is tarragon. So I have some tarragon. So I do a whole mixture of tarragon, thyme, basil, etc. And unfortunately, not chilies, although the chilies are looking pretty good at the moment. And the leaves get a wash. And I separate all the, the dead bits and the stalks and things out before I put them in my salad. Okay, so the leaves are washed. And I'm going to put them into a lettuce spinner. Um, 
don't neglect, don't, don't reject leaves with holes in them. Because I have a theory that, well, once they're washed, they're not dirty or anything. Um, and then I have a theory that the leaves with holes in them actually have different compounds because they protect themselves from caterpillars. And then I don't, uh, I don't, uh, the, the thyme is woody, so I strip the little individual leaves off afterwards, and so is the tarragon. Mm -hmm. So those two um, I don't put into the mix. Okay, so there are all my leaves. Uh, basil, silver beet, <clears throat> etc. And you can see on the top I've stripped all, lots of the thyme leaves and the tarragon because I don't like the stalks, they're too woody. But I've kept quite a few of the other stalks in because if they're soft enough to eat, they're fine. And you can see that my container is full of leaves and I'm now going to chop the leaves up and you'll see what happens. Okay, so that's how the mixture of leaves ends up. I chop them up with the scissors. I just put the scissors in there and, and chop them fine, crisscross. And the reason why I'm keen on leaves in my epic salad is because there's lots of evidence coming out now that there are all sorts of compounds in leaves which are good for gut bacteria, colon bacteria. Uh, one of the most, uh, well, one of the ones that's been identified is something called SQ. It's a special kind of sugar only found in leaves and apparently it's essential for bacterial growth. It's, uh, the technical name is sulfoquinivole, but don't worry about that. So I believe that there are lots of polyphenolics and things in leaves uh, which are essential for uh, gut health. So that's why I have all those leaves. So now I'll move on to the next ingredient. Uh, next I'm going to add some mushrooms. And you can see that these mushrooms, they've discovered that if you expose mushrooms to UV light just before you package them, um, they secrete vitamin D. So I don't particularly eat mushrooms because of the vitamin D, but mushrooms are actually chitin. So um, they've got all sorts of other compounds in them, but chitin is almost indigestible, so it's a good source of like chitinous fiber. So mushrooms is the next thing. So some mushrooms, and I'm going to cut the mushrooms up as well. Next, a few snow peas chopped fine for a bit of crunchiness, and some com Cucumber, chopped fine as well. Red pepper, chopped fine. So if you can add anything that's brightly colored, like red pepper, uh, blueberries, tomatoes, purple carrots, sauerkraut, you know, red cabbage, anything like that, anything that's brightly colored indicates antioxidants. So get your antioxidants from the bright colors. <clears throat> okay, so these are purple carrots. I've taken the top and the points off of them, but you might be able to see they're, they're quite fibrous, and the fiber is good, but of course um, it's the purple color uh, that, that's you know the antioxidant, so I don't know if you can get purple carrots where you are, but we fortunately can get, and they taste beautiful, they've almost got a floral aroma, so I'm going to grate these up into the salad now. So you can see there we are with the purple carrot grated, and you can see it's getting more colorful with the red pepper and the purple carrot. The pigment in the purple carrot is called an anthocyanin, if you're interested. Some chopped tomato. I also add some dried fruit, which I chop very fine. Up until recently, I've been putting in dried apricots, but we have now have this packet of dried pears, which I'm, I'm using. It's quite nice. What happens is, if you chop it fine, every now and then you come across a little sweet morsel, and it's just lovely contrast. So there you are now at this stage, I add some oat bran, not a lot, a tablespoon maybe of oat bran, maybe a bit more, because once again I've read somewhere that oat bran and brown rice is all you need, you don't need chia seeds or quinoa and all these things, they're just as good. So I add the oat bran to add a little bit of more uh, fibre. Um, I also would have put blueberries in here at this stage because they, you don't want to cut them up. But I don't have any blueberries, so just bear in mind, blueberries are really nice, a nice fruity composite. Okay, next I'm going to add some feta. And this is Edam cheese, and I'm going to cut it into smallish blocks and mix it into the salad. 
Um, I read somewhere that one of the few sources of butyric acid is feta cheese, but it has to be the traditionally made feta cheese. So if I get a chance, I buy, I go and buy a chunk of Greek feta, which is traditionally made. I'm going to chop these into small blocks and add them into the salad. Okay, so there we are with the cheese, and I'm going to mix the cheese into it all. And if you don't want the feta to all stick together, what I do is I sprinkle a little bit more oat bran on top of it and roll it around so that it doesn't stick stick together in big balls, so you get individual pieces of feta. Okay, so you don't want this to taste like just a horse food. So what I, I add is I've got some Italian seasoning, lots of black pepper, cumin powder, and lots of turmeric. You'll see the turmeric in a minute where, where I put the turmeric. And then you can add chili or any spices to just make it more interesting. Um, add that to this mix. So I don't put salt in because there's enough salt in all of these plants that you don't need to add salt. I also add red cabbage. Um, it's, I think this is uh, Polish, but anyway, it's red cabbage for, for that uh, anthocyanin, that purpley pigment. So anything like with those colors is good and, and it's quite flavorsome. The, uh, the red cabbage is sauerkraut basically. You can also use kimchi, which is a Korean fermented vegetable. These are fermented vegetables, and these contain lactic acid. So the three acids you want to try and get into your gut is lactic acid, acetic acid, which is vinegar, and butyric acid, which I said comes in the, uh, the, the traditionally made feta. So those three acids, your, the bacteria are short of those. So if you can get those into your gut with all of this, um, you get happy, happy bacteria. Okay, and now for the final touches. Um, this is actually a mayonnaise bottle, but it's got vinegar in it, just white vinegar. Um, olive oil, it doesn't have to be extra virgin olive oil, but olive oil, and then natural yogurt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, uh, first of all, the oil, a good healthy dollop of oil to seep in. Then I'm going to put the vinegar on, and you need, the vinegar is part of this, those three simple uh, nutrients you need for your gut. Lactic acid, which is in the fermented cabbage, acetic acid, which is the vinegar, and butyric acid, which is in the naturally produced feta cheese. Um, the olive oil, it just mixes everything together nicely and gives it a nice texture. And you can eat the natural yogurt alongside of it um, as a kind of a garnish. Um, sometimes I put some in on the side and sometimes I keep it separate in a, a little mug, uh, whatever your choice. You can vary this to chilies or whatever you've got uh, uh, to, to change this, but you want to make it nice to eat, so you need to add a bit of spice and uh, flavor as well. So there it is, um, epic salad with all this scientifically, well, supported ideas about what would feed your colon community. Natural yogurt, and as I said earlier, Sometimes I'll put the turmeric in here to make it a bright orangey yellow. I'll mix it into the yogurt, but this time I'll just mix the turmeric into here. There's no need. So there you go. That's, that takes about an hour to make, and it's unlikely that you could finish this in one go. So I normally have, have it in two goes, you know, maybe lunchtime and tomorrow lunchtime. It'll keep for a day in the fridge. So epic salad for gut bacteria health. Signing off. Bye.